The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is uh, John Illick. I'll be your presenter today. Hope everyone is doing well. Today's webinar, we will focus on topography, contours, and hill shade uh, within the Surety and Surety Pro platforms. Um, we'll look at different layers, different tools, different maps that you can create with this information. Due to the nature of this webinar, we won't be taking questions during the webinar. If you do have questions, please uh, jot them down and um, call us uh, or email myself with those questions and we'll be happy to uh, walk you through anything that uh, you have questions on. Um, you see my email is listed there and also our phone number. I will also put this up at the end of the webinar so that you can uh, see this information. Like we had mentioned, we're also, we're gonna also be um, looking at uh, a short uh, preview of the layers or review, I should say, of the layers panel. Um, we need to uh, look at that because it's important. I think some people are uh, missing out on some of the land intelligence layers that we do have available in these programs um, that are not on by default. And uh, we want to make sure that you can take advantage of those. And we also want to show you how you can change, in some cases, some of the properties and uh, or turn on uh, a layer, turn off and on. Sometimes a layer uh, is on, um, especially if you share a subscription with somebody else, they may have came in and turned on a layer and you log in and you're not seeing what you normally see or you're missing something, we wanna make sure that you're aware of that you have control over those individual layers on the mapping screen. So with that, let's, uh, let's begin. Okay, I'm gonna be working in uh, Surety Pro. Okay, so if you're in surety, the only thing you won't, you wouldn't see this uh, information in the upper right area here, uh, where we have farm name, uh, company location, client, crop year, farm name, so on and so forth. You would not see that information. But as far as what we're showing you, as far as tools, uh, layers, uh, reports, uh, you have access to all the same information and they will function all the same. Uh, I'm using Surety Pro, so I have some set boundaries uh, created, and I won't have to draw uh, any boundaries uh, in the system. So like we said, uh, we're going to start with a uh, short review of the layers panel. Now the layer panel in Surety and Surety Pro exists in the lower right area of the mapping program. When you first log in, you'll see the layers and uh, the first group uh, you'll see is boundaries. Now this panel sh is shared not only with layers, but it also in uh, includes several other uh, pieces of information in, in, in other panels. One is if you start drawing tools, you'll see information on the drawing tools over here to help you with anything you need. There might be some additional tools here. Uh, so be aware of that. Uh, if you see this, you just click on another uh, panel there and it'll uh, bounce you back. Um, the search panel is also located here. So if you click on search, this allows you to search locations, legal, lat long, townships, addresses, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's included in this panel. If you are running Surety Pro and you do have parcel data, uh, uh, access to parcel data, you will also see the parcel search tool here also. So um, if you see anything other, any of these others, you can just click on layers and it'll take you back to your layers panel. So what is the layers panel? Well, the layers panel includes 
uh, all features that can be displayed on the map um, or any intelligence that those layers include uh, can be used to create reports. Um, if you're not, uh, one little thing here, if you're not getting audio, make sure um, make sure you have it, your uh, audio uh, headphones are turned up or your headphones on or you're calling in by phone. Um, make sure um, you might have to readjust that. Um, these, uh, these webinars will be recorded, so if you do miss it, um, you'll be able to pull these up. Um, if you do have any audio issues, uh, please, you can type in the question area, type in a question to let us know. Um, I'll wait here and see if anybody else types in a, a, with audio issues in the question area. Okay. Not seeing anybody else having issues. Okay, let's let's continue. Again, I apologize if you have an audio issues. Um, again, this uh, webinar will, will be recorded. We'll be recording several uh, webinars over the next few days of the same content. So if you do miss it today. Or can I get it? You can uh, watch it at your convenience, and I'll and I'll email everybody where that will be located when it's available. Uh, let's continue with the layers panel. Layers panel again contains all the layers that uh, uh, can be displayed on the map. So if we zoom into an area, as we zoom in, you'll see more and more information being displayed on your map window, dependent on your scale. Uh, all this information that you see displayed is contained in the individual layers. Uh, and they're listed over here on the right. And you have the capability of turning these layers on and off. Now we have certain layers that are um, set by default. So when you log in the first time or you log in, uh, they're set. Once you make a change in the layers, uh, they that is set then for that subscription so the next time you log in that change is still there so if you uh, for example here if you're used to using the FSA fields the yellow boundaries and you do not see them that means they are turned off so uh, by default they are but you can turn those boundaries off and on and you do that on any layer by just clicking the little box next to it on or off sometimes uh, uh, in a production ag uh, personnel, they might have the crop history on. If you see something like that, not necessarily something wrong with your screen, just come down to your layers and uh, check which layers you have on. That may be causing, um, may be causing your issues. So each uh, layer here, um, and you can see we have quite a bit, but we have broken them into groups. It's not quite as well organized as we'd like to see it, but we are in the process of of hopefully uh, make some changes to that so it's a little better intelligence there and how we organize that but uh, we have three main groups we have boundaries we have orthophoto and then uh, and we have other and we'll go through each one of those uh, so under boundaries these include the fsa field boundaries if you are running surety pro you would have your borders layer uh, there those are the ones that you create and save uh, we got crop history. Uh, if you have parcels on, you'll be able to see you turn your parcel layer off and on. Let me turn that off for now. Um, we got some information, other layers here that you might use depending on what industry you are in um, and so on and so forth. Um, we also will have these uh, layers that we're talking about today, contour, topo lines and topography hillshade. Uh, we got our uh, satellite imaging layers. Um, the next group uh, is orthophoto um, 
most of you won't see uh, this information down here. Uh, this is uh, just on my account here, administration account. You won't see that, but you'll see FSA photo uh, that you can turn it off and on, uh, and you also see the photo dates. Uh, in this case, we see our first drop-down menu. Well, not our first. We do have an end, but our first layer drop-down menu. And what you do here allows you to pick uh, from any of the layers that you may uh, uh, different uh, dates. For example, under the ortho photo. So if you want an old, older photo, you can just select it, and it'll change to that older photo. And, and there you have it. Um, it'll stay there when you log out or close the program, it'll stay. So next time you come in, you will see that older, older photo will be there. So if you want the current, you're going to have to come back and, and actually change it back. Uh, and and uh, so you can change from a drop down menu, you can and change information on those individual layers. Uh, third group, and a lot of you may not be aware, might not be aware it's there. You might have seen it, but not quite aware what's available is other. Okay, so because some of these groups are large, as you see, we got a little uh, plus sign next to other. Uh, when you, uh, we also um, have it in some of these other subgroups here, but when you click that plus sign, it expands out that group. Okay, and it brings out a whole uh, set of other layers uh, so in this in this group we have things like your major and minor roads, the red lines, and and the labeling on there. Uh, with counties, uh, township names. If you have PLS, we even got quarter sections that we uh, have uh, just created just to help with uh, identification and quarter quarter sections. Uh, we also have uh, things like township names. If you do have township names. Uh, and we got some specialty layers here. Um, so if you're in Minnesota and you work in production ag, if you need some of this information, you can turn that layers on here. Uh, we also have, um, we, we, this is showing you where we, uh, I want to show you this, where we have two different things available. We have a soils layer. Okay. So if you turn that on, the only thing it's going to show you are your soil zones with the mu symbol for identification. It does not show you any other type of um, attributes. And that's why we have created the, the soil map report, which will give you much more information because uh, uh, the create on this map would just get too busy. But if you wanna see an outline of those soils on uh, this map, you can you, you sure can come turn your soils on here and see that. Now, one important, there's a subgroup under other, I think might be important to some of you, and I wanna make sure you're aware of it. It's called H2O. You see, it's got plus sign, so let's put this on that. So now that we've expanded that, we've just opened up a whole nother set of information. Um, by default, these are all turned off, um, but uh, some of these might be value, uh, rivers and streams, and water bodies, which show uh, areas of, uh, of uh, lakes, things of that nature. We also have our wetlands layer, which may be important. Uh, we do, uh, and then we also have the watershed area, and then we have the FEMA information. Now, in the past, you had to turn this FEMA information on, create your FSA map to get the FEMA information. Now we've, in the in, uh, distant past here, we created the we created the FEMA report, which gives you that information under the property uh, of interest. So you don't really need to have those on, uh, but you can turn those on if you uh, have interest in that. And it's gonna show you that FEMA information, if it exists. Uh, for example, here it says area of minimal flood hazard. Uh, so you can turn those on if you wish. Um, so, want to make sure you're aware of these other uh, type of layers and under the layers panel. Now one more thing on layers before we move on to topography is that you see some of these are in blue here. Um, that means they you can link and that means you can adjust some of the properties under those um, 
features. So let's look at wetlands, for example. Let's click, uh, let's turn it on. Let's click under wetlands. And now you bring up the properties. Now these may change, it depend layer, but most of them have the general. Uh, you can turn, you can adjust the scale for turning off and on. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't uh, worry too much about that, but you can play around with that. Uh, we have symbology. So we have a default color or you can color by, in this case we have attributes. And what we're doing is we're coloring by, uh, I'm not gonna get into detail on all of this. Uh, you can uh, call us with more information or you can go to our support pages and look up player properties under each individual layer. Uh, we can also adjust and change what you have for labels and where they're placed and how large they are. Um, once you make a change, you can update to see how it looks first before saving it. Uh, and then when you're happy with what you have, you just hit save and now that becomes uh, permanent. Whenever you turn it on, that's how uh, the properties will be displayed. You can also go back to default. Uh, we have a default for each layer if you want to start over. So those are the layers and we'll you'll see under the, when we talk about the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a sensitive mouse here. When we talk about contour, topo lines, and topography, hill shade, you'll also we'll be looking at some of those other properties in there. So that's layers. Uh, we want to make sure you're aware of those. And uh, so if you see something on there that you've seen before, you know, search your layers, or if you're looking for something uh, that you may have seen or, or not aware of some of this other um, information that we have available, um, look under these uh, layers and uh, you will find that information. Okay, let's uh, move on. Let's start talking <clears throat> uh, to uh, about the uh, topology. Let's talk about elevation information. Um, in the past, as we've um, as we've uh, provided a um, fairly um, simple elevation map, a topography map for um, creating a report, we should had no elevation showing on our actual mapping screen, uh, but we did have a topography map, and so if you've used it before. This is probably what you're familiar with. It's from uh, what we call a digital raster graph created by the USGS. Um, some of these can be uh, are approaching maybe 50, 40, 50 years old, maybe more in some cases, but they're fairly old. They're not updated that often. Um, and they probably won't be updated anymore because we have moved on to uh, better things that we can use in our mapping systems. So if you're happy with this, you can continue on. It does show contours and other information. Um, and be happy to use that, but we have added more information, more intelligence to our topography uh, uh, layers. Not so long ago, we added topography contours. And um, so a little background on uh, where we're gathering this information from. In the background, that creates what we have the topography contours and then the topography heel shade that we'll look at is something called, uh, is a layer that you can't control, but it's uh, what creates this information. It's called a DEM, you may have heard that, or a digital elevation model. Now the USGS, uh, who's in charge of uh, some of these mapping layers, has, uh, has uh, taken information they gathered over the years on, on elevation and they've modeled it in, in a DEM. DEMs have different um, resolutions. Now some DEMs have been created uh, from space, from satellites, from um, from uh, aircraft with radar or you probably have heard of LIDAR which is uh, hyperactive or hyper accurate um, um, elevation information. So the USGS uses a combination of things that they've recorded over the years to create uh, these uh, digital elevation models. And what they are is have a, they have certain resolutions. And right now we're currently in the United States using either a 10 meter, a three meter or a one meter resolution. There's not too much one meter and three meter is starting to 
uh, replace the 10 meter in many areas across the country, especially in flood prone areas uh, where more information is needed. So what does that mean, 10 meter, three meter? Well, it so they go around the world, think of a grid on top of the US and each square in that grid is, for example, on 10 meter, it's 10 meters by 10 meters or roughly 33 feet by 33 feet. And then each one of those corners where they end up, they grab an elevation point or an elevation number. And then, so you'll see a picture, a, a set of dots in a grid across the whole US at 10 meters or 33 feet from each other. And they have an elevation number. Now the elevation number is fairly accurate, uh, is very accurate. Uh, they can grab very accurate elevation numbers underneath that point. So the, the Z value is, is you call. Uh, the X and Y would be your uh, ground, uh, it'd be your uh, north and south, east, west type of uh, direction. So they have very accurate. And then they use that information, and we use that information then to create a digital elevation model, which in turn gives us our topography contours and our hill shading. So my, you imagine now a three meter is every 10 feet is a point with elevation, and one meter, of course, will be uh, just uh, every 3.3 feet. So um, you can see that uh, as you go up in uh, resolution of the DEM, you get fairly, um, not necessarily more accurate Z levels, you get more accurate within those points from point to point. Now we're gonna show how uh, accurate some of those three meters are uh, uh, already, and that's just every 10 feet. So they'll get much better. And in a lot of cases, the three meter is good enough for what uh, most of our customers will need it or use it for. Uh, so that's a little background on how we're creating this information. So let's uh, look, let's start with a layer that we added um, a while back called topography contours. So if you're familiar uh, uh, mapping, let's, let's go to topography contours and turn those on. If you're familiar with mapping, you've seen these uh, lines on maps before, and you looked at the old uh, topography map, you see these lines, and these are called contour lines. And they represent changes in elevation, or they they, they represent an equal, uh, a line that represents an equal elevation. Uh, for example, and I apologize, some of this might be a little hard to see, but uh, I'll try to explain it. Uh, this line here is, is 825, that means it's 825 feet above sea level. And everything we do here uh, as far as elevation is in feet. <clears throat> Even if it's not marked, it is in feet. Um, so uh, don't confuse the resolution of the uh, digital elevation model that which we list on some of the reports. That's in meters. But when we show our contour and elevation information, that is all in feet. So this line here, as we follow it around, represents on, in this area, the height of 825 feet. And so, uh, depending on your contour level, and that's the distance between lines that you display on the map, um, you'll see different lines. So this goes 835, 830, 825, 820, and so on. So this would represent a five foot contour level. So now, like you said, you can create contours on the map. I'm gonna take some of these fields off here. Uh, you can see information on the ortho photo in the background, these contour maps, and uh, be able to look at them. Now, you can adjust how much detail you have on your map, on your map screen, uh, as far as contours, and what resolution that contour level is. Uh, and this is going to be dependent on where you primarily work. Um, if you work in areas that have just subtle changes in landscape, um, you might uh, um, want a little higher resolution. If you have dramatic changes in landscape, it can get fairly busy. As you can see, as the contour lines are closer together, you may imagine you've got a steeper, a steeper uh, a slope to that area. So it, this is all dependent on where you work. You're gonna set your properties and we'll go through a lot of these properties. You're gonna set your properties and that's probably what you're gonna stick with. Um, um, 
the default might not uh, be what you're interested in. Um, so, but you can change these contour intervals. So this is a field in Iowa. It's got some relief to it. Um, let's uh, uh, go to an area in here. I work out of the Red River Valley in North Dakota here. Very flat. I'm not going to pick one of the most uh, one of the most level fields, but one that's fairly level. Uh, in here, in this area of the country, and you may have some other areas of the country that have uh, level land like this uh, over a course of a mile, you might only have a change of uh, elevation of only a couple feet. Um, and so, um, so very level. But uh, contour information, elevation information is important. Either ditching and drainage and things of that nature. And so, um, as we look at contours here, um, you can see um, we have five foot contour level, which isn't showing much information. As you can see, this whole field here has no information on it. You got this river here that runs through here that you know has a little bit change. We don't see much on this property. Um, so if you're working, continuously working in areas like this, you might want to change that contour level. And you can, if you go to the contour topo lines and you see it's blue, you click on it, it's going to bring up layer properties. Now, right now, the only properties we have are your intervals set to your scales. Hopefully down the line, maybe we can add color and things of that nature. But for right now, this is all we have available. So when you click on that property, it's going to first, I want to recognize this is the current scale. This is the scale of the map window. One to 5,915. So if you want, you can take measure out an inch here, and that's equal to 5,915 inches. Um, so that's how that works. But this scale, now you can take this and relate it to up here. So it falls between 5,000 and 10,000. That means we have a five-foot contour level. Well, if you want to look at this level, um, so let's uh, let's zoom in here. I'll reflect my field here. Now. Oh, I'll refresh this here. Now, if I look at my topography, my scale now is 3,000, 1 to 3,128. So now if I look in here, it has a contour interval of 2.5 feet. And you can use decimal places for contour levels uh, with this information. Um, so again, we're not showing a lot of information. Uh, on here so you can see how level this is okay so let's say i want to see more detail i can come in and change this well let's change it to one okay and then update you don't have to save it yet you can update the preview what it looks like so now we're starting to see more information as you can see how well these top uh, contour lines represent areas in the field this is a wet area and you can see uh, uh, it's affecting uh, vegetation um, and you can see uh, some other details and how well it represents. And oh, let's go down even further. Let's go down to a half a foot here and update. Now we go a half a foot, we're starting to see some of these drainage areas here. So these natural drainage areas, some of these man-made drainage areas. And so you can see much more detail. As we get closer to the road, of course, we have the ditch. You can see at a half foot, it, the rise, it can get pretty busy. So you can change your contour intervals. And then if you're happy with that, or you're fine with in your area of interest, uh, you just hit save. And now that is set as your uh, scale and your intervals. And you can come back and change it anytime you want. Now that's for the mapping page. And uh, I'm not gonna save that. Uh, hopefully it didn't save it, but that's for the mapping page. It's gonna be uh, work on it till we change it. but. That's that's again for the map page, and that's what you see here on the screen. Okay, of course, uh, what we've done be, for detail and just to, to look at individual properties, we created the topography contour map or report. So let's take a look at that. And again, I'm gonna pick my property here, and we'll look at a couple other properties. I'm gonna pick my topography contour map. This will bring up our map. Okay, um, some of you may be familiar with this already, or you're familiar with the soil report, but brings you in, or the FSA report brings you information. 
So let's take a look at this. Of course, you can change the title like in all our uh, most of our reports. Um, but let's look at information here. So we have our outline. Now mine's red. Uh, some of you might have a different color outline, and you can change that under map options here. Um, let's look at some information. Of course, we got the scale here. We're dealing with a uh, uh, we're dealing with a uh, quarter section roughly, and so here's our scale. Um, here's our source. In this case, it's a three meter digital elevation model. Our contour interval currently on this map is set to five feet. Our minimum elevation is 894.2 feet. Remember, this is within this boundary. Our maximum elevation is 901 feet, and we got a range of 6.8 feet. So the difference between the highest point within this boundary and the lowest point in this boundary is 6.8 feet, and we have an average. And then we also put standard deviation. You'll learn that standard deviation, if you're interested, the lower the standard deviation, um, the more level your field is. So as your standard deviation or the amount of elevation changes within your field go up, your standard deviation will also rise. And of course, we got other information on location information. So that's fine. But again, you say, well, I want to see more than more contour lines because this is a uh, fairly level field, uh, you can do that. And what we do, and you're going to see this on many maps and reports, is that you can come in and add or change the contour interval right on the report itself. Now let's back up. If you are not seeing this list of options when you create the report, that means you are creating um, a report directly to PDF and you will not get these options or have the capability of working with these options. You will need to change and let's let's review that real quick here because I think it's important. To change that you'll come up to tools, options, options page. Now on that options page if you come down under printing options you have in this red box if you are not seeing those tools to the right of your report, you have this clicked. You have build maps directly to PDF. That means you're building the PDF and then you're maybe printing and maybe you do that as a convenience. But but uh, if you want to access those tools, um, you need to switch this to print maps from a web page and you need to hit save then. That will save that and cancel. Now when you create your reports, any of the reports you will see uh, menus over on the right. Now you say, well, I want to create PDF. Well, you can create a PDF directly from here. You just hit view PDF. It's one more step, but it allows you to have access to these tools. Um, so you can say view your PDF, save your PDF, print, so on. You can also change information on your report. As a, so um, you can remove selection layer, which like if you choose the FSA boundary, you use those, it'll remove all other FSA boundaries on the report. They show up as white lines, I believe, if you have those on, you can remove those. Uh, you can set the text size, and that's the te text in the middle of the report, color, outline color, border color, and you can also turn on other attributes. So in this case, um, I can turn on acres, save it, and my acres will show up there. So, and those acres are the text information. This location here, the township range and section will show up there unless you go to the layers and you turn off that, that layer then those labels will not show up. So that's some of the things that you can get by having those options. Yes, it adds one more step to printing or saving the report as a PDF, but uh, it gives you all option in all these tools. And the one thing that we can do now with regard to topography contours is that we can change the topography contour level right on the report. So uh, five is not showing enough. I'm going to go down to one. So I type in one and I click update interval. It's going to update your report. And now you see more information. If you're happy with that, uh, print it out in the way you go. Uh, so you can change your intervals right on the map. And we'll look at this a little bit more as we do some other reports. So that's 
uh, topography contours, okay? And uh, so if we look at some other areas um, around the country, um, here's another field with uh, based on our scale. But uh, here we're in uh, the Bozeman area, Belgrade Bozeman area. Let's look what happens when we do get uh, closer to the uh, Rocky Mountains here. And you can see here the Rocky Mountains. Um, so as, uh, I'm sorry about my mouse here, it's a little. So as we get closer to the Rocky Mountains, and if you deal with a lot of topography, this is a little extreme, you can see now it gets very busy. Um, so you might want to adjust your scale if you're working uh, close to a larger hill. So this is extreme, and I apologize for mouse. This is the extreme, this is the extreme of how you can uh, see, you probably never have that. Uh, more likely you're, you're, you're working in an area such as Iowa where, as you see, uh, your contours aren't as, as, uh, steep and so um, keep that in mind but if you want your contours on the map you can uh, again you just come here and you turn them off here uh, we do have a report so your area of interest so you can come in here and create your topography contours there and of course adjust your contour level to what you feel you like to see and on that so that was the topography contours now recently as you may have seen, we just upgraded. Uh, we had another layer uh, and uh, some more tools and uh, reports. And that's called Hillshade. Now, Hillshade uh, gives you a color representation of elevation within an area of interest or property. And so let's let's look at that. So let's start with topography Hillshade here. Let's turn on that layer. What's going to happen is we're going to color. Now, you may have seen this on in an atlas or seen this in our program. This is a topography hillshade, and it's a colored map representing elevation. Um, in our scale, the highest point within the area of interest is always going to be uh, in the pinks or whites. The lowest are going to be the blues, dark blues, or light blues. And um, even though we don't have a, a scale here, there's a scale available on the topography hillshade um, report, but that doesn't change. Now, they are not; those colors are not set to a specific elevation. It's all relative to the area of interest that you're looking at. So if, for example, on the mapping page, we use whatever is included in the mapping window. So if I zoom out once, you'll redo the topography, and you see uh, some of the colors have changed a little bit within the property. You won't see any pinks or blues because there are some areas higher out here. So it's relative to this window, okay? Let's zoom back in. So if we're looking at a particular property like this, um, you can also do the topography hillshade report. But before we do that, we'll talk a little bit more uh, on hillshade. It has properties. Okay, let's click on and look at the topography hillshade properties. There's two properties. For top one is opacity. And that's basically saying um, how, what you can see through this layer, uh, how much you can see through this layer. Kind of the opposite of, um, of um, transparency. We we'll use opacity, and the other is vertical exaggeration. And, but let's look at opacity. So this is a layer, a hillshade layer. And so let's set this to 100%. And let's just do an update. Now, what you see is just a colored, flat colored map. It kind of lose some of the uh, three-dimensional effect to it. So if you're interested, if this is something of interest, you could use this. Um, that's 100% opacity. That means you cannot see through that hill sheet layer. Let's go to zero and let's see what's behind this. So what's behind the hill shade is our digital elevation model. And it's a grayscale model. So if you like gray, looking at grayscale, 
You've seen this before. You can see that. You can see the detail, the individual topography, the hills, the rivers in the field features. Um, that's what's behind it. So when we add color above that, as you can see, it gives us a little bit of three-dimensional effect. So we can see uh, the different coloring and, and you can see the highs versus lows. So that's opacity. Now, vertical exaggeration, sometimes um, you get to areas where elevation isn't that uh, pronounced, such as we were looking at in the Red River Valley there with that field. You can exaggerate the elevation. Now, that does not change the elevation numbers, the true elevation numbers. So if you do a report, it would still show you the, the difference in those numbers are true. Or if you put the contour lines on, which we'll show you later here, those numbers are true. We do not exaggerate those numbers. We do not change the data behind it. What it does is exaggerates the display. And you may have seen this before uh, if you're working in some other program uh, that has uh, 3D or something. You can exaggerate the elevation, the C features more. Um, so ours says zero to 200. I'm not going to go in details what they do. It's I'm not quite sure how they do it, but what it does is if you go to zero and you update, you can see that's zero. Um, you can see there's no vertical exaggeration here uh, at all. Okay. So, but if we want to add, so if we go to the other extreme, 200 and update, you're going to see that's the extreme and you're going to show, you're going to see the slopes, the shading is going to be a lot more pronounced. Um, so you want to find something that looks good in between. And, and again, we default, I believe, to 50. Uh, but you can set that based. Again, it might be based on the area you're looking at, how much elevation change there is or relief or the difference between the highs and lows. Again, I would uh, uh, play with that a little bit. And when you're done, just and then save it. So that's the Hillshade properties. So that's Hillshade. Now, one thing you can do is with Hillshade, of course, like a lot of layers, uh, we allow you, oh, let me go back to that one. We allow you to create, uh, which one did I have there? Oh, must be that one. We allow you to create, uh, let's turn that layer off here. You can create a report. Uh, so we have the topography Hillshade report. Let's look at that. So like all your ele elevation maps, it's going to have your elevation information for or within that uh, property. Let's just change things here for a little bit. So that's, uh, now you can see, well, you got the high and low, and this is relative again. So the extreme high would be set to the max at 814.6 feet above sea level, the low 736.5. So the low somewhere in here, the maximum somewhere along this ridge. But you can see the ridges within this field uh, and uh, and you can see the lows or the drainage areas within this field. So again, the statistics are here, uh, average um, in your range. So this has 78 feet of release between the highest point and the lowest point. And it looks like that's pretty much probably right in right in here somewhere. Now, as you see, as I turn that on, we've got contour intervals. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's take a look at that. So we have the hill shade here on our map, but we can also add the contour topo line. So now we can add, uh, now we know just where the highs and lows are based on color. We can actually add uh, intelligence to it by showing what are the actual highs and lows. And so when you add that contour, you can see it, cre it even adds even more of a three dimensional effect. Now you're looking at um, contours, you see an information and how they are. You can see the slopes, uh, change in slopes. If I move this and it redraws based on the area of interest, you'll see some changes there. But now this is the topography uh, on the map itself. And as you saw, <clears throat> if we create a, <clears throat> excuse me, if we create a report, on Hillshade, you'll see we turn on the topo topography lines, contour lines, and you can adjust those to whatever you want 
within the report itself. And that's, uh, and again, that adds a little bit more depth to the elevation information. So that's uh, the topography contours, the topography hill shade layers. Now, what we've done that we have the DEM, we've added it, uh, give you a capability of turning it on under certain other layers. One is the orthophoto itself. So under orthophoto, you'll see a box called hill shade. And if you click that on, you'll see a change. It was a slight change. You didn't see much of it uh, here. We'll look at a different, few different fields to see uh, where, where it's more elevation. You'll see more changes. Uh, but if I click on the hillshade, it has the same properties as the other one. But this is based on, this hillshade properties are based on, uh, the, or, the opacity is based on orthophoto. So basically, if I reduce the opacity, I can see through that, and you can see the DEM behind it, okay? Um, let's go back up here. Redo that, and again, the vertical exaggeration, if you go to extreme here, what does is it just colors the slopes a little bit uh, more. Okay, and remember, um, well, we won't discuss it. I'll discuss this at the end here, looking at sun angle and things of that nature. But let's go back uh, to where we were, update and uh, update that. So let's look at a different, a few other fields with that hill shade behind the orthophoto. Um, so um, here's one in the in the Delta, Arkansas. You can see with the hill shade on. Let's turn it off. Here's the FSA photo. If you turn it on, you can see subtle changes, subtle topography within that. Uh, if you brought on the contour lines and if you had those set up, uh, you'll see some of those match there. Uh, let's look at um, Iowa where we know we have a three meter DEM. Um, you can see that. Let's turn the topography contours off so you can see changes in elevation. Uh, let's look at another one here. You can see subtle changes in the elevation as we move around. Put the contours on, you can see how they match that. If we zoom out, and I believe we display to about a four contours. We display to about a four by four mile area. Um, so you turn those on there, and you can see that. So it adds a little bit of a three dimensional effect. And it also depends on the color of your orthophoto. Um, you can see that changes. If you, if we did have a bare soil photo, um, it would look a little different, but you can see the subtle changes. So it kind of, if you want, it kind of gives a little bit of a three-dimensional effect to your uh, orthophotos. Uh, it might be a nice little feature, uh, feature to have in the background there. Let's go back to our photo. So you can adjust that by turning on the hillshade there. And then we've also added hillshade uh, to the Max NDVI. Just a little less subtle, but you can see we've got hill shade, and now you can look at vegetation versus topography uh, on some of these areas. Let's go to a field here, North Dakota, with a little relief, so you can see that. This is a large sloped area. This is a 10 meter DM, so it's not quite as nice uh, on that aspect, but you can add now. Uh, a little bit of three-dimensional effect to your um, um, satellite images to help define areas. So again, the red spot, no vegetation, top of a hill, sandy area down here, less vegetation, drowned out areas over here, less vegetation, and you can see that these are low versus high areas. So we've added that, and then we'll probably be adding hill shading to whatever layers would take advantage of that. So again, we went through quite a bit of information today, um, and you're more than welcome to give us a call, drop us an email if you want more information or something, you need a question on something. 
Um, but also I want to remind you that uh, we do have all this information in our support system. Not only do we have text uh, examples, uh, text and examples, we also have videos. So if you come up to help, support, okay, and there's our documentation. Uh, just not this one, there we go. Uh, if I type in topography contours, or you could just type in contours. Let's search our our support system. So once you typed it in, hit return, give it a little time. It's searching our support system, and there we go. Uh, what you'll see is uh, release history, but if you see the second one here, topography contours report, click that on. It's going to tell you about topography contours map. You can also then uh, discuss the topography uh, contours itself. And if you click on here, look at, we also have the topography layer and it shows you the layer, shows you the properties, how to adjust and everything of that nature. So make sure uh, if you have questions, go through our search. Um, so if you want hillshade, and this will reply to any information, soils report, anything. Uh, if you need more information, please take advantage of our support here. We have most of the information in there. And in, in some cases, we also have, uh, in some cases, we also have videos. Um, don't at this point in here, but uh, some cases the videos are embedded within here. Uh, also, if you go on to our help, how to videos, we break some of these down also here and those are short videos on individual pieces of or tools or layers within surety and surety pro program so take advantage of those uh, we also have a youtube channel also have a youtube channel just go youtube.com and search for agridata and this will show you all our uh, videos we have a, a host of support videos there uh, we'll, the webinar video, this webinar video will be there, or one of the webinar videos uh, regarding topography contours and hillshade will be available there for the you to watch at any time. Uh, so also uh, keep that in mind. Again, if you have any questions on today's webinar, um, email myself. You can see the address here, john.elic at agridayinc.com, or give us a call at 701-746-8580. Anyone at Agridata will be willing to help you on this information and get you the information you need. Uh, with that, this will be the end of our webinar. I thank you for your attendance and have a good day.